an exciting day to start training camp. Uh, truly the start of the 2023 football season in our mind. The guys have been working hard all winter and spring um, to get to today. We finally get to do football. Um, even though we're in helmets and underwear, if you will, uh, it's great to be back on the field. You know, as you approach training camp, and I know this question's coming, everyone's going to say, well, what do you want to see? And, and first and foremost, you want to see an improvement every single day, right? What form or fashion is that going to be a 1%? Is that going to be a 10%? Some players are going to take small steps. Some guys are going to take bigger steps that are new to the program. But come out here and see the guys improve every single day. Also, with some of the new faces, we want to continue to build camaraderie. We want to see them bond and work together, right? Some of these guys are playing next to each other for the first time. So we want to see the communication skills continue to improve. Like we said before is, you know, with the new rules in college football, we were able to get some of those summer access practices, you know, the same deal, kind of in underwear as well. But to be able to come back out and, and have an idea of the installation already, the scheme already with the meeting times we've been able to afford it all summer, to be able to come out now and execute at a high level, to go against each other, uh, to give ourselves a great look. And, you know, most importantly, obviously stay healthy. So we're going to continue to work every single day to improve ourselves so from an exit and O's, get better fundamentally um, and a lot to work on, uh, get ourselves in football playing shape, and then come out healthy and well. And uh, all eyes on that first game of the season. Can't wait, but it's been a heck of a day. Um, excited to continue to camp. I'm the only one out there smiling. Uh, I'm, I'm sweating my tail off and so are the guys. But, man, it was a great day. Uh, a lot of work to be done, obviously. Uh, but this is the start of something special. Carlin, you've got so many new faces. Do the depth chart at running back and receiver. How do you balance getting guys rotation snaps yep. uh, that, that you can see what you need to see? So the new NCAA rules, I'm not sure if you guys knew, really two weeks ago they changed the rules. You're now allowed to go to training camp with 120 student athletes. And so that was a new uh, NCAA rule that was implemented last minute. You know, part of it was you know, still got some of these COVID guys still, you know, guys going in the portal, all that stuff. So people wanted to make sure you had enough numbers to go through camp. How many was before? It was 110. And even shorter every year, it's kind of gained access with the number of guys. Um, you know, back in the day, it was the old uh, Lou Gehrig and, and Cal Ripken, right? You play as many plays as you can, and you never find yourself. Now guys are not, – I'm not going to make comment on that, but guys aren't getting through as many practices as they used to uh, back in the day of two days and even three days. But, yes, that number has kind of increased uh, over the years. But back, back to your question, Frank, is – so one of the things we do is we do two fields. So when we go to teamwork and Skelly – We'll separate the group. So we may take, say we have 16 wide receivers, okay? We'll take eight wide receivers on this field and take eight wide receivers on this field. Same with the quarterbacks, we'll split them up. And you'll say, well, how do you decide? Sometimes we'll go with maybe the guy that's the first string guy and the third string guy. Sometimes maybe we'll go with the first and ones and twos over here, threes and fours. But like we tell our guys in, in uh, camp right now this early, the depth chart doesn't matter, right? It's literally a piece of paper we've thrown up to get us organized, and then they set the depth chart. And so we do a lot of that, what we call two spot, um, where guys are getting multiple reps. Uh, obviously, out there in the heat, you, you know, you got to be smart with it and, and make sure that you're not overworking anybody. Uh, but that's kind of one of those things we did. That way you maximize the amount of work everybody's getting. Is there a whole lot you can learn from, from day one? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the biggest thing that, uh, Clayton, that we actually talk about going day one, right, is we should know today's install right but this is the first time to actually go against a live body even though it's in helmets and, and spider pads and shorts you can still see the guys that can step with the right foot that make the right calls guys that can handle a different look than they've seen right all of a sudden the, the defense is seeing emotion right it's a little bit different when they're showing it on film and talking through it in a meeting room no different than going on trash cans right and same with the offense right all of a sudden a front may be one and then something different right it's easy to talk about it on film or in the air conditioning now all of a sudden you're out there in the heat going through it. So you get to see some of that. On the back of our shirts this year, some of the guys have, everybody in our staff actually got it, is the word finish. And we talked to them about it today is being able to finish, right? I don't like to reflect much on years past, but last year we didn't do a great job of finishing games. And we didn't do a great job of finishing everything that we wanted to set out to accomplish. And so you look at that, we talked about today, going out there and finishing stretch to the best of your ability. Go out there and finishing Ball security, right? Owning the football. Go out there and finish raking at the ball, trying to knock it away. Go out there and finish period seven, right? Go out there and finish all the way through the end of practice to make sure that we are able to play a four-quarter football game. And I think that's important for our guys to hear. Look, it's a, like a lot of things. It's only as good if we put it into practice. Uh, but I think we could tell a lot today. The great news is we filmed it all. We got a 1,000 camera angles. We'll be able to go back and watch it, and the guys will be able to learn from it as well. Do you feel like you guys have more explosive offensive playmakers than you did at this time last year? Well, you know, that was a, a question that we've 
knew that we had to improve upon, right? Can we be more explosive on offense? Look, we had some really talented guys here last season, uh, but we wanted to, we always talked about how do we be a more explosive offense, right? That it's hard to go get there and sustain those 12, 13 play drives. I remember after one game, Mark had asked, hey, you know, is it, are you looking for that two play? Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to score in two plays every single time. That'd be phenomenal. But I do think, right, the ability to sustain drives is something, but man, we'd love to be able to be more explosive. We got a lot of playmakers. Um, you know, to Frank's question about with the, the, the amount of guys rotating at running back, wide receiver, tight end, like that's what we're hoping to see. Okay, who are the explosive guys? Who are the guys that can catch the ball and go 80 yards? And we've had a lot of that in the past. Wasn't where exactly we need to be the last few years, and we hope with this uh, group this year that we're able to be a little bit more explosive. Do you have somebody in mind that you think that, well, we need this guy to produce? Or is he just played out in campus? 120 of them I have in mind that need to produce. Um, but reality, we know those guys. Like, we, we have high expectations for a lot of the guys. Blake Watson, right? I mean, a thousand yard rusher the last two years at Old Dominion. We expect him to step up. We expect more things out of Jay Ducker. Right? We expect things out of Sutton Smith, who we got to see some stuff as a true freshman. We need our quarterback to continue to own the football and make better plays with it. Right, We've got to be more sound with that. He's got to find a way to throw a better ball on the deep ball. So we need those guys. And then we got a lot of new faces at wide receiver. And that's going to be interesting to see who can step and make those big plays. Um, we got to see some of those flashes in spring. We know Blake was hurt and Toski Dove were hurt in spring. So now it's exciting to go out there and see what they're capable of. Uh, we know Demir Blankham sees a young man that we expected. We expect Rock Taylor to continue to step up, right? He's a guy that we got to see some flashes of last season. Uh, so those are some names for you. And then like I've talked about all along, I think playmakers are just as much on defense as anybody. And I know you like to hear that as an old DB, right? We've got as much depth as we've ever had on defensive line. We need some linebackers to step up and make playmaking abilities. And then we got a bunch of guys in the secondary competing for spots. Is that, is, other than wide receiver, would you say like D-line and DB are kind of the most wide open spots on the roster to, from a comp competition standpoint? Yeah, so Mark, what I think what we'll do with having right now, look, day one to Clayton's question, um, we got depth. Is it quality depth? I'll let you know. I think it is, right? It's, it's, it's great to have a bunch of bodies. If we have 120 bodies and they're just bodies, man, we're in trouble. But if we got 120 capable bodies, um, but we've got guys that we think can make plays at the D-line. And so what that'll allow, I don't want a defense lineman, a D-tackle especially, to play 80 plays, right? Jalen Allen, we know he's capable, but we don't need Jay, Jay Allen playing 85 plays a game. So if we can get some guys that can rotate a little bit and that way we can be fresh in the fourth quarter, maybe that allows us to finish games. And, and same in the secondary. You know, last year, again, this is last year, we played 13 different guys in the secondary. I don't want to play that many this year, but I feel like we've got 13 guys that are capable this year, which is exciting. At a position like receiver where there's so many new faces, what can guys do during this period to kind of step up and show? First and foremost, they have to be fundamentally sound and understand the playbook. Because we will not play guys that go out there and can't get through the first five installs because shame on them and, and shame on us as a coaching staff if they're not ready. So if guys are going out there and making mental errors, we can't play them, right? We got too many talented guys like you talked about with the depth at wide receiver. By the way, welcome. I'm sure you enjoyed this heat, right? A lot like Evanston, all right? Uh, you know, but uh, to, that, to that extent is, right, then who can go out and make plays? Because at some point they can all catch, they can all run, but now who's gonna make a play? And we'll be able to see some stuff, you know, with routes, you know, versus the DBs, one-on-ones, Skelly, all that stuff in some team periods. But who can do it consistently? Then we put on pads, who can make plays? And then who can do it, practice in and practice out, practice it. And then guess what? Those will be the guys that get the starting nod. No, the one game point. about being able to finish. I know you don't like the harp on last year, but I know, like, a lot of those close games, you know, could have went the other way. How do you... How do you accurately get that emphasis of cross in fall camp to where it doesn't happen again this season? Absolutely, you know, and that's, Frank, that's one of those things that, that started the more at 6 a.m. after the bowl game, right? I mean, that's where the study started, like racking my head, you know, in a, all last season too, right? How do we find ways to finish games? How do we find ways? And my job as a head coach to put us in better position. I always take blame on those because I didn't put us in the right position to finish those games. And wait, one, are we, are we conditioned as well as we need to be? Right? Do we have the right personnel out there? Are we having the right scheme to be able to do those things? And then talk about it. We talk about situational football all the time in college football. So we're going to go through. We didn't do it today. Day one was a base day. But in a couple of days, we're going to be talking about more red zone stuff. Two minute. You guys know how much I love talking about situational football. Four minute football at the end of the game, right? Running the football, being able to get the ball back. Um, owning the football, right? No t turnovers, right? Be able to get takeaways. So those are things we're going to continue to harp. And then, you know, we can sit there and talk about it. Finish, 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 finish. But now we got to be able to see it execute. And so reality, we weren't able to get 
every player through 24 periods of practice. And I didn't ever, in 25 years of coaching, I've never seen day one of training camp, every player get through practice. It's supposed to be strain. It's supposed to uh, be a grind. Uh, we take care of our guys and we're healthy and we don't put them at health risk. But part of that is getting up to that point and then being able to talk about it. And we're going to put our offense in situations where they're going to have to come from behind in a practice situation and finish the ball game, right? A two minute situation. Maybe they're down two scores. Maybe it's down 10 points, right? We're going to put our defense in an opportune situation. Hey, right? Here's what you got to do. You got to be able to get the stop and find a way to get the ball back. So continue to find ways to put us in situations where we can grow from it and then talk about it. And how much does the depth help? Like one guy might necessarily be better on third down situations and this guy might be better. Like how much does that kind of help the overall finish aspect? Yeah, you know, and we, you and I have personally had this conversation is, and I never use the youth as an excuse. I never will, but we were young. And I do think a quarterback that's a year older makes a difference. I mean, Seth Hennigan started last year. He's 19 years old. And now he's still 20. He's still probably one of the youngest starting quarterbacks in the country that's now going on his third year. Like, man, the decisions he's made, the experience, will put him in a better situation for this year. Uh, the maturity of some of our guys, right, to be able to go out there and do what they're doing. I think this is a mature football team. And then you're exactly right, depth, right? We, we went into some of these games, and we were looking at guys that, you know, in training camp, they were, you know, wow, this may be our – our, our seventh or eighth D lineman, and <laughs> they end up starting for us at times, right? We talked about it over time, like how do we keep some of these running backs healthy because we've had to rotate through. And so if we can stay healthy and have good depth, and then all of a sudden you got guys that aren't, we don't want any of our guys getting 85 plays a game other than our, our starting quarterback and maybe the starting of the line. Uh, but if we can rotate guys and they're fresh in the fourth quarter, then we can go out there and find a way. I hope, like I always said, I don't want these close games. Right? You know, is it better? No, I hope we're in the exact same situation we were in a lot of these games where we now, it's on us to finish and, and we can show that we're capable of doing it. Once that, it feels like in today's day in college football, it's rare to have a quarterback that started as a true freshman and is with one coach now for going into a third year. I mean, just the familiarity and what he's shown so far, how much does that raise the ceiling of this team? Yeah, I, I think that's, I always said it, even though I'm, I'm not the quarterback coach, I'm not the offense corner, but the relationship with the quarterback is huge. And we've left no doubts, you know, going into his first year, it was, hey, is he our starting quarterback, right? That was the question. That's all we, every, that was every question we had to ask. And now we know that Seth Hennigan's our quarterback. Um, and now putting that onus on him. We've challenged him to do more. I've challenged him, hey, we're going to let you go do some things out on the field that we've never let a quarterback do, right? Brady White was very smart. Ferguson was very smart. Now we're going to ask, hey, Seth, we're going to put some onus on you to go out and put us in the right situation as an offense. But that familiarity, that comfort is huge. But we're going to challenge him. We're going to strain him and push him to continue to get better because he is not where he needs to be, and he'll be the first to say that. But it gives you confidence. You know, I don't sleep much at night, but when I do, I can at least lay my head down knowing we got a damn good quarterback. And uh, it is rare, right? To, you see it all the time with some of these quarterbacks always doing this, that. Look, Seth may not like me very much, but at least he respects me. And that, that's all I can ever ask. And maybe that feeling's mutual. Do you, feel, do you feel like you guys, with the lack of the run game at times last year, maybe put too much on his shoulders, even with how confident you guys are in him? Yeah, I, I think, look, it, it goes hand in hand, right? If we can complete the deep ball, that opens the run game. And so I'm not going to put, I, look, I will always blame myself when the run game doesn't work. And we got to design better schemes. We got to put ourselves in better situations. We got to run the ball better. We got to block better. And I've said it all along. You guys hear me say it all the time, right? Sometimes we didn't block very well at wide receiver last year. And that cost us some in the run game. But if we can get the run game established better, right, then they got to decide. Are they going to play one high safety or are they going to play too high? They play too high, we'll probably hand the ball off 90% of the time. And guess what? Everybody on offense will be fine with that as long as we're getting first downs. No different. They want to play one high. Our quarterbacks and wide receivers and tight ends better win the one on ones, and we got to make them pay for doing so. How much will you benefit as a program now that it's year two with both of these coordinators? And how much will the scheme look? Not to divulge what it will look like, but how different will it be or not be compared to last year on both sides? Yeah, uh, Mark, I think it does make a difference. This is a different age in college football where, uh, I, again, I, th I think I said this on um, Chris Vernon's show, it was like 562. And I said with Northwestern 563, coaches, head coaches and, and position coaches change jobs in Division One football. And that's, I mean, that's <laughs> outrageous. And guess what? The number's going to be even more next year. And that's, that's the turnover we're seeing in, throughout athletics. Um, but I think having both our coordinators, Barnes and Pamsey, back is, is tremendous for us. Uh, it's confidence. We understand what we're doing. The guys, it's an off season. It's not like the coaches, you know, now we had some new coaches. Uh, but it was a familiarity. And the players that did return, even with new faces, at least had an understanding. So it wasn't, hey, we got to teach everybody this new deal, right? And so we're, 
you're able to go out there and hopefully play a little bit faster. Um, that communication, especially like we talked about with the quarterback, uh, is going to be immensely huge moving forward. And so, um, look, they're great coordinators. We're excited they're back. Uh, we expect to make steps in the right direction in special teams as well uh, with a new coordinator in that situation. But that's going to involve everybody. Is that kicker competition completely wide open? Mm -hmm. or what does it look like? Wide open. I hope we're not going back to like we did like right before the game. You guys said, who's the kicker? I said, I don't know. And, and I, that, that, no, that kept me up when we had kicker situations. Uh, look, let's find one. But again, Today was honestly the first day, you know, we had, you remember none of these, some of these new kickers weren't here in spring. And so, oh my gosh, this is, I, for the first time I wanted to walk away from like, you know, some inside run stuff, you know, and, and underwear and go watch the guys kick. Cause I'm like, oh, this is what the, oh, nice to meet you. You know, <laughs> oh, that's a good kick. Um, so yeah, let, let's hope it gets settled sooner or later, but I do think we've got some capable guys. What do you need right now between now and opening kick from your offensive lineman? <laughs> Improvement every day. Improvement every day. We've got three guys that play a lot of football games inside, right? You know, starting two starting guards and a starting center. Now we've told them their their jobs are, are are up for competition always, and we need to see them gel together. We got some question marks at tackle, and those two we got a lot of tackles that know that, right? We got guys that are competing for that. So, like I've said, every training camp, even back when I was the O line coaches, man, we they got to come together, they got to gel together, they got to be on the same page. Um, now for them, it, it, you get to see some stuff in these you know, underwear practices before we put on shoulder pads, but we gotta see them improve every single day, just like anyone. But that's a group that's gonna take five guys in communication over and over and over, massive repetition. Um, but I'm excited about the group. I think we got depth at offensive line too, which is exciting. Hey, what's the biggest difference between a Ryan Silverfield practice last year, first year, and this year? Yeah, you know, I, Terry, in all my years of coaching, right, you, you gotta grow as a coach, you gotta learn new things. Plus, this game's ever changing, right? The way you could talk to a player 20 years ago, now I hope no one digs that up on me and, and gets a lawsuit the way I talked to him 20 years ago, but, and now you can today, it's completely different. But I told this group last night, and I said, guys, I'm gonna be very real with you. And I talked to everybody, and we got a big staff, we got a lot, you know, 120 players, and I said, I'm going to coach you guys as hard as I've ever coached any group in my entire life. Right, and now, does that mean every day's got to be a ass chewing or a uh, rah rah positive? No, it may sometimes that means I'm just so dialed in detail on certain things. But I, I've got man more of myself. I told them I'm going to give them everything I have every second of the day, and I think today you go out there and I told them we're not going to settle for anything. I'm not going to settle to just get through a play. I'm not going to settle just go through the motions or trying to hey we got through practice or hey we we, we just got slightly better. No, that's not good enough. We've got to make tremendous strides every single day, and I'm gonna challenge them. I mean, this is going to be a grind. Now, we take care of them, we're gonna be smart. I mean, shoot, they got a darn off day after three practices coming up. I mean, I've never seen anything like it, but uh, that's my way of trying to pull back a little bit, but uh, I'm, I'm, I've gotta do a better job of coaching them constantly and not allowing anything to slip. Those little things we talked about that sometimes may have cost you games, in no way. And I'm coaching our coaches hard. Uh, you know, today I, I was on our staff quite a bit. And I got to demand more of them, and it starts with me. But uh, I think anybody that was out there said, wow, you, you've got a little bit different demeanor. Now, in the building, my voice probably doesn't get much louder than this. Um, and, you know, I'm going to hug up those guys that I was in their, in their grill today and, uh, and, and love them really hard. But then we're going to coach them hard in between those white lines as best to our ability. When you talk to them, and, and as we stand here a month before the season starts, what does success get to you? Yeah, I mean, first off, right, I'm not going to use the coach's cliche of, success is getting better every single day. That is, right? And every coach in the country is going to tell you that when they're asking this exact time throughout the country, right? Oh, get better every single day. Uh, find ways to go. Uh, honestly, right, I don't sit there and look at wins and losses. I know there's, you know, hey, how many games you got to win? What, what's it got to look like? You know, what bowl game? We've got to be better than we were last year. Um, our ultimate expectation of ourselves is, is to win a championship. And I won't deviate from that. Uh, if we fall short of this in December, you said Ryan was a failure. It wasn't our expectation. Our expectation is to win the championship. Now, if we go out there and, and, and win 10 games and lose the championship, was it a good year? Sure, but it wasn't what we're capable of. Uh, we, we expect to go out there and win every single football game, and it starts with the first one. Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all.